And we're back, with some more oxygen not included. And today I thought we'd start with a little bit of a challenge, just to sort of throw it out there for anyone who's interested. Designing a base that runs entirely on one kilo of natural gas per second. No other inputs, just the one kilo of natural gas per second, and you have to support at least two duplicates in a perfectly sustainable base that will never run out of resources. Of course, there's, there's going to be a little bit of a caveat there. They also have to be provided with suits of some sort, either Atmos suits, jump jet suits, or lead suits, and you have to have a sustainable source of replenishment for those. So those suits wear out and they have to be repaired. So you can put as much resources as you want in at the start of the base, so to speak, but it has to be infinitely sustainable off just the methane alone. Uh, for those of you who are interested in a bit of a challenge, we about a week or so before I'll need to be using them, but uh, I think I'll steal a few designs. We're going to have several planets to place bases down on, and I'll be interested to see what kind of solutions people come up with. This little thing over here is a methane melter. It takes in the solid methane, melts it down, and spits it out as natural gas. A few people were asking how I was planning on doing it, so I thought I'd include that just as a little bit of a, a build helper if anyone was wondering how to get started. If you don't want to use this design, you don't have to. You can make your own if you'd li like. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled. Today, we are going to be starting our sour gas boiler. And I say starting because this is going to be a rather large project, and I doubt I can get this finished in one episode. But we will definitely get it finished in two, so I've given myself enough time for that. Oh, uh, before we start up though, there is a minor issue. I was worried about this last time I was setting one of these up, but this time it seems to have come true. The uh, NAPTA there has not went up to the top like it's supposed to for this infinite storage, so we're going to have to deconstruct that airflow tile and let a little bit of the pressure out. Hopefully that won't mess things up too badly. Yeah, you're probably going to get a few more rads than you're comfortable with, but it's fine. What's the rads like up there? 200 and... Yeah, it, it's grand. It's grand. And great, we lost all the NAPTA to the background of space. <sighs> you know what? We'll just we'll, we'll just let all those rads float off into the float off. We don't need them. We can get NAPTA again later. Actually, I do have NAPTA. No, no, not going to worry about. It. We have bigger fish to fry. Namely, a rather large area right in here needs to get got. Before I make any major alterations, though, I think a little bit of insulation around these rockets. This didn't cook our steam turbines on takeoff, which is good, but it is cooking the surrounding area a bit. I'd like to maybe get a little bit of insulated tiles in there so that if we do have to go back for more supplies, we should, you know, not incinerate the place we're trying to turn into something productive. But I think, yeah, I think once that's done, this all has got to go. Everything in about, say, this area from ooh, here to here. Yeah, like about everything around there. I might be able to keep the mini pod. If I can't keep the mini pod, I'm going to have to melt it. It's the only way to get rid of it. And unfortunately, it melts at 1409 degrees, which would be painful to have to get rid of. That would take a little bit of time and effort, but we've got we've got liquids tungsten we could call upon, I suppose, if we really need to. That there should stop the exhaust problem. Let's see. 3x9, yeah, and 3x9 here. This one we're really lucky on. It seems to go down to here, but doesn't interact with the buildings. It only seems to interact with liquid, solids, or gases, of which we have none in that area. Well, okay, up here a bit. Uh, with that completed, oh, sorry. With that completed, we're going to have to rip out this old power array. We don't need it anymore anyway. It's not like it's going to be necessary. The nuclear power is supposed to be what tides us over here. I think we've got a plan sorted. This sort of square here... Ooh, we might need to go a bit taller or a bit shorter, but we should be able to fit most of it inside this. I've made a few adjustments to the prototype. It, it'll probably work. Well, that seems like a good start. We've got more space to work with. Now I just gotta get rid of some of the water out of here. Then all of the crit You know what? We'll start sketching it out and see where we go from there. For those of you who missed the design phase, this is the kind of thing we designed earlier. It's going to look a little something like this. So at the moment, we're trying to put in this sort of key-shaped thing at the top. I think that's about right. Yeah, we should be able to fit most of it in there. That's going to be some steam turbines, three layers of two steam turbines. This is going to be our... Uh, our boiling tube, whatever you want to call it. Counterflow heat exchanger boiling tube. And over here will be where we're putting the rest of the steam turbines, and down here should be where we're putting our aqua tuners. Yeah, this is going to be a big project, isn't it? I'm pretty sure we've... We've given ourselves enough space. This should work. So down here, we're going to get started on the boiling plate. This is where all the crude oil is going to boil into sour gas. Well, it'll boil into petroleum, then sour gas. If we can just about squeeze this in. This is all going to be made out of ceramic. So this entire area is going to need to be very well insulated because this is where most of the heat is going to be getting dumped into. 
And this over here is going to be our aqua tuner box, which generates all of that heat. Uh, let me see. To inject that heat, we're going to use a thermium plate. Yes, that's right. Thermium metal tiles, a thermium mechanized airlock, and two thermium temperature shift plates. Because of course we are. It's just an incredibly expensive way of doing things. I'm sure I could find cheaper materials to do it out of, but uh, why bother? I just realized I should probably vacuum this place out first. Would that not be a smart plan? Yeah, we need to get rid of all the gases. This place has to be a complete vacuum if we want to make this work right. Uh, so we can't seal this off. I think we'll build the rest of it, sort of sealing the whole thing around the edges, then. Then we're going to have to vacuum it out. Uh, let me put in a boiler box. I think this looks incredibly confusing. Alright, this here is going to be our steam area, or where the aquatuners go. We're going to be mounting eight aquatuners in this section down here. Uh, this here is where we're going to have our cooling for our sour gas, and this here is where we're going to have our excess heat destroyed. Or, you know, turned into power, whatever way you want to think about it. Yeah, this is going to get real messy, isn't it? It's fine. It's fine. Should hopefully be able to explain the stupidity of this. To clean out all the gases, I was thinking we just sort of build a frame, seal it in, maybe, you know, have one or two entrances with liquid locks, and then just sort of vacuum it out from the inside, and once all the gases are sucked out, we finish the construction of it from the inside. It should be possible. And then we'll have a finished vacuumed production. Uh, the problem will be getting the power in and out. I'm going to have to make some sort of vacuum locks to get the power in and out, sort of like we've done here where we've got the power going into the steam turbines, but I'm also going to have to do it on the other side. Hmm. Let me think for a minute. So down here we're going to have this steam room. There'll be an aqua tuner in it, and since this is all going to be steamy, we don't want any of the heat escaping, so we're going to insert it in. However, we've also stuck in this little power overlay. This, uh, leading into this room here, which we're going to turn into a vacuum, that way no heat can get out. One of those tricks we've used a few times before, but it's just so incredibly handy for getting power to places. There we go. Once that's hooked up to our main grid, that gas pump in there will activate and it will start sucking out the gases, and once all the gases are gone out of there, we'll have our little vacuum seal. And then I gotta figure out how I'm going to seal this up so that we can... Well, we're going to use the power from this to run a bunch of gas pumps in here to extract all the gases. Just gotta figure out how I seal the place up. Well, I mean... You know, that's got to be sealed up too, and a few other places here and there. We have put together a few liquid locks. We've got one liquid lock there, a second there, and a third there. All of those should help seal in this area. The rest of it is sealed all the way around, unless I've missed something, which I wouldn't put past myself, but I think we're good. Now all we have to do is fill this entire place up with gas pumps and start ripping out all the gases as quickly as possible. Now, as you can see, we're going with large gas pumps. We could use mini ones, but where's the fun in that? I mean, seriously. It'll just take longer too. This should be relatively, well, not hopefully, hopefully not too painful. Yeah, we'll just throw down lead. We've got a fair bunch of that around. And yes, I know they're not all perfectly aligned and they're a little bit askew, but I just sort of randomly threw them down and they see they probably will work. Yes, that looks, that looks like a decent sized project. And what I love most about this is we have six duplicates that are just absolute super dupes in terms of their construction, building, carry capacity, everything. They're just amazing duplicates. And these six have been doing just absolutely stellar work. It feels like we have a proper mobile construction crew. Oh, I should point out we ran out of ceramic there. So unfortunately, where is it? We did have to send back home for some more. We, we ran through 40 tons of ceramic in no time at all. That stuff just evaporates the moment you start using it. And over here, we are slowly but surely sending, well, tons of this stuff over. We've got 40 tonnes queued up to be sent. It's all arriving in reasonable time frame. Where are we over here? Yep, yep, we got plenty of payloads sitting there getting un unwrapped as we speak. The pumping has started. This could take a little time, but considering the amount of gas pumps, I don't think it'll take that long. And while, they're, while this is getting pumped out, we can use a, a giant sweep command to get rid of all this stuff that's left in here. You know, oh, except for the critters. I suppose we'll sweep out the eggs when they lay them, and if we don't see they don't lay eggs in time well we'll just wrangle them or do something Ooh, actually we could try something new nope nope we'll worry about that in a minute we're just going to get our get all the construction projects we've got queued up finished as that's going on let's do a little bit of cleanup here what i've done is i've deconstructed this tile so that we can diagonally get rid of some of that i don't think we can sweep that stuff out from there but what we can do is we can use a little bit of an auto sweeper trick actually yeah we can use an auto sweeper trick to get that stuff out of there Throw in an auto sweeper. Wait, come on, where, where do you need to go? Okay, there's fine. With the auto sweeper in place, we just set this beside it to level one, all, and the auto sweeper should just pick up everything and chuck it in. Done. 
And we can brick that in there. And that's a nice cleanup job. We're going to call that success. There is one last thing we need to clean up in here, and that is all the critters. And I'm not so worried about them freezing or scalding or boiling. It's more just a case of after they turn into meat, they'll then turn into rotten meat, and then we'll just have polluted oxygen getting, you know, coming up the system. So what we've done is we've just set up a, a critter drop-off over here, and we're going to dump them all in there. Now, there is one minor hitch to doing this. Uh, no one's a rancher. Like, we don't have any ranchers on our team. However, I was thinking we could try something I've been meaning to try for a little while. Uh, depends. Which one has got Zap? Zap is one of our best and worst duplicates. <laughs> just because of the way they're set up. If we go down and find them here, you'll notice their only thing they're good at is research. They have got lots of research, but they don't have any bonuses to their mood. So you'll notice that their mood is at 18 of 19, whereas Mel Melington here is 24 of 19, and Brendan O'Toole is 24 of 19. They have much better aptitudes for, well, to, to gain themselves a bunch of extra mood points, which is why Zap is, you know, struggling a bit. But we have given them that tr that trait from the... Neural Vacillator, giving them the Sunny Disposition trait. Now, normally, we don't want to stress out anyone because what's helping keeping them from going absolutely berserk under their stress levels is high morale, which gives them minus 20% stress. For high morale, we need to keep the morale high and much greater than their actual current morale. So you'll see here their morale, though, the morale on Zap is actually 18 of 19. So for stress-wise, they're actually getting a low morale stress cycle of 10% as opposed to the negative 20 that everyone else is getting for having high morale. What I want to do is stretch that really far and hope that the uh, sunny disposition counteracts all of that. And Zap is the best one to test it on because they have lots of points to spend and they have lots of traits they could train up in, including critter ranching and super high digging and improved construction. <laughs> That's 36 morale requirements. Uh, astronomy, oh, actually, they can, they can go grab all these science ones while they're here as well. So now the question is, will they go insane because of all of this? They're at uh, morale needs of 44 and current morale of 21. And my hope is that they don't go and stress themselves to death. Uh, low morale, 10%. Th this, this could take a minute. Oof. Low morale, 50% a cycle. Okay. Okay, maybe I went too far with that one. That was, uh, you know what? We can fix that. We can scrub them. We'll skill scrub them. <laughs> okay, so that didn't work out like I was hoping. We are going to have Zap immediately get themselves just a little bit skill scrubbed. I think we'll pick someone else to be the rancher. Someone who has a, a little bit more available morale to work with. I think the two best choices are Brendan O'Toole and Scott Opp. Uh, they basically have the highest, m highest mood to negative mood going on. Yeah, I think we'll give it to Brendan. Brandon can go do a bit of critter ranching and get all those critters out of there. I should also point out, in the newest patch that's coming out, supposedly the uh, the ranching skill will now actually improve. So, people who are grooming critters, say like grooming sl stone hatches or slicksters or anything like that, will, will improve their ranching skill as they go. That's been bugged for oh god knows how long. There's actually a, there's a patch that fixed it from 2019 it seems, but... Yeah, literally built into the game now, as of the next patch, you'll gain experience from ranching and shearing. I am so looking forward to that. It will it'll just take one of those problem problematic things of where we always had to hire the highest rancher we possibly could right out of the gate. Wow, before Zap has even finished, they're up to 23% stress. We may have given them way, way, way too many skills. Uh, let's get you a few skills back on board, just to, you know, just so you can use the the atmos suits and stuff. So close, we've got most of the basics done. We've almost vacuumed it out. It's uh, what it's ten to MCG. Yeah, that should hopefully be dissipating in short order. In fact, the moment those animals are out of there, I think we're going to start putting in the piping down here and the aqua tuners. That's going to be one of the messier segments of this. We are almost done on the gases front. Uh, that stuff will. It's slowly just evaporating into the background of space. Once it gets small enough, the stuff just starts disappearing. I think we're just about golden. We'll leave the gas pumps in for just another moment or two longer, but I'm thinking... Yeah, fill this place up with water. We're going to need about five tons, maybe a bit more. Then we're going to be putting in the aqua tuners here. Uh, aqua tuners are going to look a bit like this. We're going to be using thermium ones, of course. Now, plumbing in here is going to get a bit interesting. And uh, let's go with ceramics. So, we'll have... The, the super coolant coming in here from this side. This will then go out this port if it's not necessary. 
if it is necessary, it gets through and pumped out the other side. And then same thing over here. So basically it's going to run through both the aqua tuners. If it's above temperature, we'll grab, say, a liquid pipe thermal sensor there, make that out of steel. Done. So if that detects that... One second. If that detects the temperature is not above the if, or is below the required amount, the aqua tuners will turn on and start chilling down the supercoolant. Then the supercoolant is going to pop out here the other side, and we've got a sort of um, hmm, is it down to here? Or, yeah, I think it's down to there. Then we're going to have radiant pipes made of thermium, and they're going to be radiating all of that lovely juicy temperature through this section here. Done. Yeah, I think something like that. Of course, we still have to put in a little bit of automation. With an automation wire, we'll use some steel. Oh, for those of you who worried about us running out of steel or thermium or anything like that, let's just go back to our home planet and check our levels. We have, in terms of steel, 168 tons. And in terms of thermium, we have 90 tons. Uh, which reminds me, do we need more? Yeah, we need more niobium, don't we? Damn, that niobium's never going to finish. There we go. That'll get us some more thermium. And on the steel front, if we check under here... Once the save finishes, we still have 48 tons of iron and 16 tons of lime and a bunch of refined carbon. In other words, we're going to be turning all that iron into even more steel. We're going to end up with about 200 tons of this stuff, a bit more. So steel-wise, we're pretty fine, and thermium-wise, we're also pretty good. Time for a bit of a cleanup, remove all the power wiring, and oh my god, I just realized. We could have vacuumed this out along with everything else. We didn't need to make this fancy little corner piece. Never mind, never mind, it's done now. It's all finished. It's all done. We just gotta remove all of this infrastructure junk we need it. We didn't need we don't need anymore. Ooh, we're gonna need eight aqua tuners, so that's 1.2 tons of termium, 2.4, that's uh, 4.8, uh five, that's six, seven point two tons of term that's a lot of thermium. That's over seven tons of this stuff. That uh that feels a little expensive, but I I I'm just glad that we can afford all of that. We did all of that prep work so that we could build this thing without actually breaking the bank. There was so much prep work that went into getting all the ceramics, all the things we needed, and once you get it done, it is nice to actually lay it all out there. That is going to take a little bit of time to build. That's going to be all the piping. They're all pretty much the same until we get to the bottom. That bottom one, though, we're going to be putting a little bit of a, a heating element at the bottom. Wait, utilities. Liquid tepidizer, give me one made of steel. Yeah, right about there. And we're going to have to fill that with super coolant. Hmm. Actually, it might be an idea to put in the super coolant first and not accidentally delete those pipes. This next bit is one of the more, well, expensive as well. I suppose they're all expensive parts when you're making a sour gas boiler. We're going to need to fill up this area here with super coolant. And it's it's going to need to be a lot of super coolant. And let's make that a level 6 build. Let me make it a level 7 for the tepidizer. The reason you've got to use super coolant here is it's the only way to stop the liquid tepidizer from shutting off. If you try to encase it in any other liquid, we're going to be chilling this area so cold that anything else would just freeze solid. Maybe you could do a bit of liquid hydrogen. You know what? No. Then you're going to have problems with liquid hydrogen flashing back and forth between li liquid and gas. This is pretty much one of the few ways you can do it. One of the, well, one of the more convenient ways you can do it, though rather expensive at the same time. And, oh, I forgot to delete that so that we can put in some oil. All right, we'll finish this off, and I want to get this... Uh, I want to make sure the tepidizer is fully submerged so that it will work correctly. We are almost ready to seal this in. All we need to do is put in some power wires, and we're going to use heavy conductive wires. And just in th case things go horrifically wrong, we're going to use steel. Now, I know that is an expensive way of doing things, but I think we can afford it. Done. And then once that's finished, we can seal that in there with ceramics. Then we can seal off the top, and we can probably start feeding in super coolant. We'll, we'll wait, though. We'll wait. We'll wait until that's finished, and then we're going to start putting in thermium tiles over here. Actually, those thermium tiles can go in now. A little bit like that. And we're probably going to be putting in some across the top. So, yeah, why not? At the same time, we're down to about 9 tons of ceramic. We brought 40 tons with us. We then sent over another 40 tons, and we've got 9 tons left. So we've spent... 70 tons of ceramic already because of course we did uh, that's just how much stuff costs when you start using ceramic and ceramic piping the only thing we really have left to do though is this ceramic chimney here so i've got 40 more tons on the way and a whole bunch more super coolant as well uh, any super coolant there? ah yes there we go 200 super coolant and the next batch should also include some ah there we go that should also include some ceramics soon we'll be we'll have plenty more of them to work with oh one last thing i forgot in here we should probably put in some temperature shift plates there's going to be a lot of steam pressure in here but we're still going to want to spread the temperature around 
diamond, I think, all the way. Hmm, now where to put these? So it's sort of a, a rippling pattern of diamond temperature shift plates that should hopefully extract all the temperature from around the area and bring it all to here. This is where we want the majority of our heat to go. And I think that should spread it out quite nicely. We could use some more, but I think well, that's, that's sufficient, especially with the amount of steam pressure we're going to have in there. We put in a lot of water, which means it's going to take a while to spin this up, but I think it'll be fine. Probably. Of course, I'm making mistakes left, right and center. I forgot to put in an automation signal for this liquid tepidizer before sealing it off. So we'll just have to break back in there for a quick second. Uh, we definitely have the power going to it, though the power is going to be coming over this section. Uh, yeah, we're going to want to put in... This is going to be sort of our, uh, our power distribution box down here. We'll be using a little bit of a cooling system up above it. It'll all become clearer as it goes along. So the first section is finished. This is sealed up. No one's getting in or out anymore, no gases are getting in and out, well, not until that water evaporates and turns to, turns to steam. The power for it is going to come in through, oh, saving, perfect time. I'd like to turn down the save frequency, but unfortunately my game still crashes out pretty frequently now. Uh, I usually get it about once an episode, so I'm just, I'm, I'm being more cautious. Now, uh, this is going to be lead conductive wire because you don't have to worry about heat in here. This place is going to be a vacuum and we're going to put a layer of crude oil on the ground and that will be the temperature transfer for all of our power distribution. So we're going to get some, uh, or actually let's use steel for these. We're going to put one there, one there, one there, probably another one there, and one final one there. Hmm. Though we get, oh, I'm going to have to sort of build the last one as we leave. That should be enough crude oil, should it? And let's make that a sweep only. 200 kilos spread out all across there should give us a decent bit of cooling. To cool down this whole area, we're going to stick in an aqua tuner right there. This is going to be sort of this sort of cooling area for the, all the excess heat produced from here. And we're going to need to put in an aqua tuner right here to cool down all of the steam turbines we're planning to mount along this section. There's going to be, let's see, be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steam turbines all through here. And the aqua tuner is going to cool a lot of them down, and it's also going to cool down these large transformers at the bottom. Uh, Power-wise, yeah, we haven't quite put in the last one, but we're going to use these as sort of a plug socket, and we might as well get the cooling in while we're here. So all of these pipes through here are actually radiant pipes made of thermium. I mean, we could use more mundane metals, but why? <laughs> we're, uh, we're well past the point of caring. We brought an awful lot of resources, and I don't see any point in trying to skimp. You know, I never noticed how annoyed Drekos look when they're trussed up. Yet, yeah, that one's just like, oh, I'm so sick of this. Eh, they do wonderful jobs on all the animations in this, I gotta give it to them. I think we're at the point where things get a little bit more complicated to explain. Without having the full picture to show, it's oh, it's harder to explain what we're trying to achieve. You know what, we can make these out of lead, they don't need to be anything special. We're gonna put in two steam turbines here, and this here, this here is going to be our, our feeder section. There's gonna be a nice vacuum in here, it's actually very similar to what we did... Where is it? In this one. Uh, if you check over here under gases, there is nothing in here. And what happens is we have a power plug coming in here and going out there. So this allows us to get power out of the reactor room, or power into the reactor room so we can power stuff in this instance. Over here, what we want to do is we want to be able to get power into here without any heat leaking in or out. It's basically, we just want a vacuum seal between us. Similar to over here, actually. But for this section, there's multiple sections to this stupid build. So we're going to put this in here, and because we don't have to really worry about any temperature getting in there, I say we go with lead. Yeah, a bit of lead along here should be fine. And then maybe for the last segment, where just in case anything does go horribly wrong, we'll put in a bit of steel. Then we're going to have to put in a little bit of plumbing as well. Uh, this is where the... Yeah, these things are going to come out this direction. So I'm thinking... You don't want to run... Oh, one second saving. You don't want to run this pipe directly through the output of another, or otherwise it blocks it. Well, it did last I checked. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to run the pipe into this input, and then we're going to run that into that input. So both of them are going into the white, and then they'll pop out the other side, and we can drop them down here. So the outputs of both of those will all get sent into one bridge and out here. In fact, that's going to be repeated all the way along for all of them. And also on the same side over here. There's plenty of steam turbines attached to this monstrosity. One thing we're also going to use this area for is a battery box. We're going to put batteries on all of these rows because, well, we can, and it's a nice place to ch chuck them. Save space. Oh, and there's two options here. We could put in the jumbo batteries. They can also be made out of steel, and they hold twice as much power, but they require twice as much steel. Smart batteries require half the steel, but only hold half as much power. However, there's less power bleed out of these, so they just tend to be slightly more efficient. Though, honestly, much of a muchness. If you wanted twice the battery storage, you could just 
go with nothing but large jumbo batteries made of steel. Though that feels kind of wrong in a way. That is going to be a decent sized battery box. Now I'm not going to plug them in just yet. Reason being is there's no cooling solution for them and there won't be until this whole room is a steam room. So we're just going to cook them up to there and then when the time comes we can just connect them even though the whole area will be sealed off. Which means we still have to flood this whole area with a whole bunch of water as well. And we'll do that after the batteries are, are finished going in. Now that we've got this area mostly done, it's time to fill it up a little bit. As in, we are going to start filling this loop with super coolant. Now that super coolant should start filling up this whole area. What's the temperature of it? 34? Yeah, it's fine. So it'll flow all the way around here. And once it's all filled up, we can disconnect that. How much super coolant have we got? Ooh, only about two tons left. We're probably going to need more super coolant before this is all over. Um, down here, we're just about ready to seal off this area. Uh, we need to collect a few more pieces of junk that have fallen about the place. But once that's done, we'll just put an entire row of ceramic tiles through there, and this area will be sealed. For putting in the water, that won't actually be that bad. Uh, we'll just do that. Actually, cancel whatever is there. And now water from over here can be pumped in. We can sever it as we need to. But, yep, off you go. That is actually powered by these old coal generators down here that we made so, so long ago. But, hey, still working. They'll jump in the water in there, and that is pretty much done. Let's just do a quick sweep to make sure we didn't miss anything. And then we can just start sealing these areas in. Boom, done. Uh, ceramic all the way up there. And why is... Hey, so we might want to grab that piece first. You know what, we'll cancel that just to make sure someone doesn't accidentally push it to the other side, which would be a little bit awkward. Before we put in this second wall through here, we're going to need to do one thing, and that is put in some counterflow stuff to help uh, spread the temperature out. As it passes down through here, it's got to hit other things. For example, originally I used steel. So I used a whole bunch of these steel liquid vents, and their job is to basically transfer heat. It's 400 kilos of mass, and they're great at transferring stuff. However, steel didn't work. We're using thermium. Yep, we are using thermium. Thermium? Thermium liquid vents. That is, uh, yep, that's that's the kind of resources we've got floating around right now. It feels, it feels good, not gonna lie. Also kind of wrong at the same time. There we go, just a little more ceramic. How much ceramic have we used so far? Well, a lot. See that sort of light colored stuff? That's the ceramic. Uh, you can also see it in a bunch of the piping. Anywhere the piping is going to be going through steam or hot stuff, we threw in a bunch of that. Uh, down here we are looking good. Excellent. And what are you set to? Actually, that's a little... Let's say it's if it's above... If the temperature's above 20, then you want to activate. Yeah, which is, you know... Never mind. Okay, this sort of two-thirds of it is done. All we got to do now is just this bit and this bit down here. Okay, let's make that, say, not two-thirds, but 60%? 60%, yeah. Okay, done, done, and done. But we do have to fill these areas in here with water, which is going to make things a little bit awkward. Because we want to put oil on top of here as well. <clears throat> the timing of this is going to be a little bit annoying. But I think the first thing we'll do is we'll stick in some temperature shift plates. We're going to need them. So for this year, we're going to have the temperature sort of drained out all along this section. Uh, actually, wait, get rid of that last one. And pretty much the same thing up here. One there, and a few all the way out to that section. One there, a few all the way out to that section. That's a lot of diamond. Eh, we, we, we brought plenty with us. We didn't skimp on the resources. While this was going on, I did a little check back home and something weird looks to be happening. Uh, we seem to be... I found a glitch to generate nuclear waste. A little blob of nuclear waste falls down there and then it gets picked up. It's 39.6 kgs. Or 39.6 grams. And... Look at that, 39.6, 39.6. It's just magically appearing. I don't know why. Um, it is... We're going to end up firing that over to our planet if we're not careful. Okay, we will end up firing that over to the planet. One second, though. Let's just disable the pump for a minute. And mop it up, see if that makes a difference. I don't know what caused that. We have... We have nothing that would put nuclear waste in there. I assume something... Broke out of a pipe, or maybe, oh, maybe someone up here got hit by a rad bolt. Okay, enable the building again. Fine, in that case, damn, I can't get that out, can I? Oh, wow, you need to, why are you going over? You need to not be going over there. Uh, disable auto repair. Yes, there we go. 
much better. Don't want anyone going over to repair that. What's the bets a bunch of people are now injured? Yeah, Chris, go, go grab a hospital bed. Doctor, heal thyself. All right, back here. Let's let's just finish this off. We're close to having like 90% of it done. Just got to get a few more pieces in place. Time for a final few bits over here. And there is one thing we desperately need to do before we finish up for the day. You see, if we're going to make this sour gas boiler, it has to be for the glory of Aku. So that means we need to stick in a monument base right here, as is promised, and a min monument midsection. Uh, wait, can we? Must be built overlapping a monument middle. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it in a second. These things are not cheap. The monument base is 7.5 tons of steel and 2.5 tons of obsidian. The monument midsection is 2.5 tons of ceramic, plastic, and 5 tons of steel. So, yeah, it's a little expensive. We actually can't build the last one. We need 2.5 tons of glass, 2.5 tons of diamond, and 5 tons of steel. We're actually short the glass, but that's okay. That is perfectly fine, because back home, we are going to stockpile some glass right here. We've definitely got three or four tons of this stuff. We'll produce some more, and we'll fire over the glass so that we can get the uh, the last segment of this built. There we go. Now, maybe we should have built that last, but for the end of the day, I really feel like feel like we needed to get Aku in there. And yes, this is from Samurai Jack, the TV show. Some, some people have asked before. And yes, I know I said it was an old TV show, but you got to remember, the first episode was released in 2001. I know the most recent ones were released much sooner, but still, that's uh, that makes the show pretty old. If the first episode was released back in 2001. To put it in perspective, Two and a Half Men came out in 2004. So Two and a Half Men aired after the first episode of... Samurai Jack, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Mythbusters, the first episode of Mythbusters aired after the first episode of Samurai Jack. It's crazy how old that show is when you think about it. Anyway, I think that's enough work for today. This is uh, this is actually shaping up to be quite an excellent planet. I love that the way that the two of them are almost merged together, the, the nuclear volcanic reactor and the sour gas boiler. Actually, I think we're going to call it a sour gas freezer because it does actually freeze it down to methane. Hmm. Anyway... Sorry that we haven't got it all done today, but there was no way. There was just too much stuff to be doing. But I think next episode, we'll finish this off, get it running. We're going to have to tap into all the oil wells. There's two oil wells there, another one, third one there, fourth one there, and there's a fifth one, a ah, fifth one there. So with all five of those, we can easily run 15 kilos of crude through this. It's going to be uh, an interesting startup procedure. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Thank you.